But if you if you are in temporary accommodation, you obviously need your family around you, uh, or people of support, regardless of who they may be. So it impacted everybody. But the refuge in particular were incredibly strict, and we weren't actually allowed out. Um, we eventually were allowed out for half an hour each day for exercise. But when you have a small child of 18 months, two years by the time we left, or two and a half years, uh, they need, you know, they need a good run around the park. And the park was, you know, it, it wasn't exactly far away. You, you, you would be seen from the accommodation. So the fact that we couldn't even go for a walk, um, that was hard. And I remember the government saying that we could leave the house once a day, but it didn't necessarily specify how long for. So we, uh, you, you know, you, it was hard to even go to the shop and come back. So we were only allowed out effectively to go to the shop. That was our exercise. Um, and if we had done a big shop and we had to go to the shop again, then that would sort of be rejected. So we just felt like we were being incredibly controlled. And then there was at one point um, a case of COVID in our accommodation whereby one of the staff members had caught it and we were then having to isolate together. And we were provided with supplies, which was ultimately very helpful. Um, and we didn't actually have to pay for those supplies. They were provided by the refuge because obviously it wasn't us that had caught COVID. And um, obviously with schooling, uh, that didn't impact me directly, but I do vividly remember some of the other residents who had school-aged children were struggling with homeschooling and again, the lack of support from the refuge. Um, my son was in nursery two days a week at the time, I believe. Um, I had to implement that. <laughs> it was unfortunately necessary to gain habitual residence in the UK because I'd been out of the country for so long. I had to prove that my son was settled here, so I had to send him to nursery. And again, the refuge were incredibly strict about that. And thankfully, I was allowed to go and drop him off and pick him up. But I would quite often like to take a walk into town once I dropped him off. That was my quiet time. I didn't want to go back and converse with everybody that I lived with. It was just a reminder that we didn't have a home, that we weren't settled. So walking into town was sort of my way of getting a bit of a normal life back, a bit of normality. And upon that walk into town, I remember vividly again, one of the refuge members of staff calling me and telling me that I had to go home or oh, home back to the refuge. And we weren't even allowed to form a bubble. And it did say if you are a single mum with a child, obviously, um, a child under, oh, I can't remember, it was quite old actually, I think it was about 12, but I could be wrong, um, then you are allowed to form a support bubble. And um, it didn't specify, you know, whether you are living in temporary accommodation or not. And the refuge again rejected my request to form a support bubble with one of my friends. And I thought, you know, that would be a nice way of getting out of the refuge. It would be a nice way of getting my son out of the refuge. So I requested the guidance for temporary accommodation and they did send it to me, um, but it was actually the wrong one. It was for a different type of accommodation. So I went and I found it by myself and I researched it and it turns out that the guidance for temporary accommodation was pretty much the same as uh, for, for everybody else. So I challenged that and I was just told that they don't have to adhere to the government guidelines, they can implement their own guidelines. So effectively I was being lied to from the beginning and they were trying to tell me that these were the certain guidelines when in fact they weren't, but because I went and sought them out myself, then they admitted that actually, well, you know, we don't care, <laughs> we're going to implement our own guidelines anyway. Um, and they prevented us from forming that support bubble. So ultimately it did have a, an incredibly negative impact on both mine and my son's mental health.